Mike Reno of Loverboy shares a story of when only 100 people showed up for their show. What happened there? Also, how he keeps that voice at chugging, man, that guy can still sing like nobody's business. I'm John Bowden from RockHistoryMusic.com. I had to ask Mike Reno with our in-studio exclusive interview. I asked him when he, when he really knew he could sing. You know what? I started when I was 12, so I don't know if I knew it then or if I know it now or ever really knew it. But I knew I know one thing. I love to sing. Mm -hmm. And for some strange reason, I just keep doing it. And a lot of people just keep saying, you're getting actually getting better. Even the guys in the band, they go, how do you do that? Like night after night. And I don't know, like unless I'm completely sick, you know, with some kind of a horrible cold, it's there. And I kind of look at the big guy every time and go, thank you for giving me another show. You know, it's not like I take it for granted. And I, you know, I try not to get too whacked out all the time. You know, you just, you know, keep it. Keep it between the lines. With so many people losing the top end of their voice, which is, you know, sometimes a normal part of being a longtime singer or smoking or drinking or who knows what can lower your voice. Sometimes it's just age. So how does he keep that voice in tune? You no, know what if I knew? I patent it and try to market it, you know. But because uh, I don't really like baby around, I, I still, you know, have a couple of smokes that I probably shouldn't. I still have a few drinks if I feel like it. So it's not like I'm an angel by any means. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what I think it really is? Is I use it all the time. It's kind of like I kind of relate it to the hockey players. You know, when they take a, the summer off and they come back, and the coach goes, all right, you guys, let's start doing some laps around this rink because look at those pot bellies. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because they've been having some times with their family and doing some nice things. Now they're off season. Now I find if I take a month off, it almost takes me two weeks to get back into that right. nice little zone that's really comfortable and I can work it, go a little extra and wow the crowd. Mm -hmm. So if I take a couple of weeks off, it takes time to come back. So I think it's because I sing all the time, maybe. I don't take any time off. A little while I heard uh, Bruce Hornsby was saying something kind of interesting, and I get that feeling as an announcer. Sometimes I'll get up and I do the morning show, so I'm going, I don't feel like doing this today. But as an artist, I mean, you never let the audience crowd know that. But there must be, I mean, how do you, you must have those days, and how do you get yourself going, okay, I'm going to face 20,000 people, not a problem. Okay, I got a story that not a lot of uh, guys like me would tell you, but I'm going to tell you this because it was kind of an amazing kind of deal. We just done a show, I guess, I don't know how many people were there, 12,000. It was Next day we get these letters and emails from people saying that this lady got arrested three times for climbing over the fence, trying to get into the Loverboy show. And it's because there were so many people there, and I don't know why she just didn't buy a ticket for whatever. You know, it's still not expensive. But she did it three times. She got caught, got kicked out. The third time, got caught and got kicked out. It's the fourth time. So we're traveling to the next town, and this happened to be uh, Cincinnati. So we go to the Cincinnati show that we're really looking forward to because it's a, a long weekend. And we just did that show. And the show before that was 10,000 people at, at the other state fair, uh, just the next state over. So we're doing 12,000. We're doing 10,000. The fans are climbing over the fence. They're all throwing panties. And just like the old, you know, everything's just great. We go to the show. We get to the show. The guy's got the, a big, huge RV, like the nice top of the line one set up. The first class of gear, everything perfect. I get up and I go, what's going on? He goes, I says, where's the people? He goes, I think I advertised it badly. And I'm talking to the promoter. I'm not kidding. There was a hundred people there. So instead of getting all weird, I kind of was doing the old, don't worry, we will get some water to you people in the front. You know, and I'm, I'm, making, I'm playing it out and they're laughing. That, it was one of the best shows we ever had. We actually played longer than we were supposed to. We ended up jamming and did a whole bunch of Hendrix songs at the end of the night. I guess there was a hundred people there. It was probably the best show they ever seen. Because we were just feeling really like playing. Yeah. And if there's a hundred people there, it could have been, a, you know, a hundred thousand people. Yeah. And we've done a hundred thousand before, you know, over the years. But it was one of those times where the band played like amazing because probably there was only 100 people there. We gave them those 100 people a hell of a show. We'll have a lot more from our exclusive interview with Mike Reno, lead singer of Loverboy. He's going to talk to us about those leather pants in our next segment. He's pretty honest about whether we can fit in those. He likes, you know, like the great rockers of the past. I found that Mike Reno of Loverboy was, you know, he made fun of himself. He still has a sense of humor about all those good old days where they had all the hits in the 80s. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you share our videos, subscribe to our videos, and comment on them as well. We'd appreciate that. This is Rock History Music.